It's time for our first rebuild of FM24 and today we're taking over none other than the club that I support, Chelsea Football Club. That's right, we'll be taking over as Chelsea manager within FM24 and giving ourselves five years to try and change the club's fortunes around. Obviously, it was only a few years ago they were winning the Champions League, but since Todd Bowley's came in, there's been a lot of signings made for the future, uh, but there is so many players in this squad, so much work still needs to be done on top of that. And we're going to have to navigate that rebuild whilst also delivering success at a club that is known for not giving their managers very long at all. Here is Chelsea's huge squad in FM24 and only the players highlighted are over the age of 26 with three of them out on loans. Our best players at the club include club captain Rhys James, 21 year old Ecuadorian Moises Caicedo from Brighton and Christopher Nkunku who's going to miss the first half of the season through injury and that isn't counting a bunch of other great players that I didn't mention there. The likes of Ben Chilwell, Enzo Fernandez, Thiago Silva and Raheem Sterling. We've got lots of great players with potential too, Levi Colville being the main one. Mikhailo Mudrik is still waiting to fulfill his huge potential at Chelsea and that squad didn't even include youngsters like David Washington, Uga Chukwu and Chukwameka. And on top of that there's a load of other great young players out on loan like Cassidy, Angelo and Andre Santos. So whilst most rebuilds are about bringing players in and shifting on the dead weight, we're going to have to do that all whilst trying to integrate these young players into the first team and giving those ones that show potential a chance to really make their mark in the Chelsea side. Before we get started with the rebuild vote, I want to ask you guys if you could be absolute legends. It really, really does help the videos and the channel if you can take a second just to hit that like button. It's free to do. YouTube then thinks, wow, this is a great video and promotes it to more people. So thank you to anyone who can do that. Drop a comment down below who you'd like to see rebuilt on FM24. All of the rebuilds will be done based on your guys' suggestions and subscribe if you haven't already. I'll put the percentage of people that watch the videos that aren't subscribed on the screen right now and if just a portion of them subscribed we would have a huge subscriber jump but I want to say a huge thank you because as of last night we have just reached 25,000 subscribers which is an awesome number and something I never thought I'd say so thank you so much for that and finally if you want to carry on this rebuild that you see today you can check out my Patreon linked in the description where you can get access to the save files from season 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5 take over whenever you like and continue the rebuild yourself with that being said let's get into it in our first summer window we're not really going to be able to do too much. We've got £6 million to spend and 200000 in the wage budget. And with the amount of players that Chelsea have signed already, I think more we need to focus on clearing players out. We've got £12 million in the bank balance, but there's a big issue with the finances because unless we start winning things straight away, this club is going to tank down financially very quickly. You can see the projections over the next few years. We're predicted to lose a lot of money and be in the red, the negative, by over £130 million. So we need to make sure any transfers that we do, we get right. And as we predicted, we weren't really able to do much in our first transfer window. We'll really get started with the transfers in season two and three when we can start making this team our own. But I did get rid of one player, Malang Sar, who you probably forgot was even at Chelsea. He is left to go join Al Tawoun in the Saudi Arabian divisions for 8 million, which we can put in our bank balance and have it there to spend when we need it. I've also loaned a few young players out that I didn't envision getting game time in our team. Ian Matson is a player with a lot of potential, but at left back, we have Ben Chilwell and Mark Cucurella, who I tried to say on but couldn't so I thought you know what Matson's not going to get the game time he needs let's loan him out to our affiliate club in France Strasbourg where hopefully he can continue to get some game time and develop like he did last season in the championship with Burnley and we've also loaned out 18 year old Brazilian striker David Washington to the Brazilian divisions to get some football there now this is a tactic I'm going with to start off with similar to how Chelsea are playing currently in real life with that 4-2-3-1 kind of shape this isn't a crazy tactic it's pretty much just the preset that the game provides and if I select our best 11 here this is what we're left with obviously some of these players aren't at the club like Kepa is probably going to be Robert Sanchez is our first choice keeper this year Fafana's out injured Ziyech is out on loan Lukaku's at Roma for the year and Nkunku is injured also but even with all those injuries and loans we've got so much talent so much depth in this team that I really think within a year or so if we can hold on to our job it will start to come together as these players develop and start to learn to play with each other so with that being said it's time to simulate our first season see how we get on and then from there we can really kick on with this rebuild and make this team our own.
And our first season is a bit of a weird one. There's some things we can be very happy about and some things that are going to leave us disappointed. Now, we weren't in European competition this year and Chelsea finished mid-table last season. So you'd hope we could progress up the table and we have done that finishing in sixth place, which is still not really where we want to be. Really, like we said earlier, with the financial projections, we need to be in the Champions League. This year, though, we're only going to be in the Europa League by the looks of it, losing 10 games and getting 72 points in total. But there is a silver lining this year because we have actually delivered our first trophy of the rebuild straight away winning the FA Cup which was unexpected but we're always able to win these cup competitions with the type of squad we've got we ended up beating Arsenal in the final 1-0 in extra time and we knocked out Sunderland in the semis and also Aston Villa in the quarters so it doesn't look like it was the hardest road to that final but we got there and we won it a goal delivered by Sterling in the 97th minute delivered the first trophy of this new Todd Bowley era our best performer at the club as you might have guessed was Reese James Moises Caicedo also having a great season. The same with Wesley Fofana. Noni Madueke, who got 13 goals in all competitions, delivering on the promise that he has on that right flank. And then Mikhailo Mudrik developed really well this year and actually had a great season for us with a seven average match rating in the league, 10 goals and four assists, starting to live up to the price tag that Chelsea paid for him. Centre-back Levi Colville has developed really well too. He didn't actually play that much this year, but next season, we're hoping to give him more game time now that Thiago Silva will be leaving the club. And that's the first bit of transfer transfer news he is leaving the club at the end of his contract to go back to Brazil but now it's time for the fun bit we've got 60 million pounds to spend 200,000 in the wage budget and a huge bloated squad where really we're going to have to cut out 10 15 players here whether that's loaning them for now or selling them we're going to need to do something because this squad has too many players and it led to a lot of issues over the course of a season when it came to people wanting game time so we need to do something in that department and this transfer window is a very interesting one. It's actually more about outgoings than it is incomings as we try and balance this squad out. We've got so many sales to go through. So let's start off. Romelu Lukaku had a good season out at Roma, didn't sign permanently and has now gone to Saudi Arabia to join Al Nasser for 29 million on an absolute mega deal of £850,000 a week. Lewis Hall's loan move at Newcastle had a clause in it where he would join them at the end of that loan and he has signed for them now for £28 million, which even though he's a great youngster is a lot of money money for us to reinvest in the team. Trevor Shalabert was actually very handy for us last year, but the amount of centre-backs we had at the club, Badia Shield, De Sassi, Fafana, Colwill, Thiago Silva last year as well, there just wasn't really much of a place for Trevor Shalabert, so we've decided to offer him out. Manu came in, and as soon as they did, he wanted to join them, so we've let him go for 22 million. Even though we are potentially strengthening a rival, I feel like it makes sense, because he's not going to get much game time, and he'll probably get quite upset because of that and cause some squad issues. Another slightly strange transfer, yes, we want to get rid of Kepper, and that's not too surprising with the amount of goalkeepers at the club and him being loaned out to Real Madrid. Clearly, his time was up in a Chelsea shirt, but I didn't expect him to go to Arsenal, and that is where he ended up after a nice year for Real Madrid. They were willing to pay just under £20 million for him. He's going there to be their backup goalkeeper. We say goodbye to him and hello to that money that we can put into some new players. Tino Andrin was a promising youngster that was never really going to make it into the first team with the amount of talent that we had, so it was about time to cash in on him, so he's left to go to Saudi Arabia as well, to Al Quad Sire for 8.75 million. Definitely butchering some of these pronunciations, but Andrin has now moved on. And Ian Matson has gone to the same club for 16.5 million. He had a decent year out on loan at Strasbourg, and I just still didn't see a place for him in the squad, and he was expecting to come back and be a regular starter, and I just did not see it happening. So I thought it was time to cash in on him whilst we could. He had no interest in extending his contract, so he is left, and we get some extra cash. With the amount of incomings that we had at the club, we had to focus on quality over quantity, and we did so by signing a new goalkeeper. Robert Sanchez was okay, but we needed someone another level above him, and we have gone for one of the best goalkeepers in the world under the age of 28, 27, and it's Diogo Costa. The 24-year-old Portuguese international is already classed as a world-class goalkeeper, coming in to be a star player at the club, our starting keeper. He did cost us 64 million, I believe it was a release clause fee from FC Porto, but we are getting a keeper that's going to be in net for us for 10 years, hopefully, and be consistently good. I feel like we needed some quality in between the sticks and Costa is going to be that man. In real life Chelsea's strike force is Nicholas Jackson and Armando Broya and whilst they do have potential and could be enough for Chelsea in real life in the game world Broya doesn't look like a great prospect and Jackson looks good enough to be a squad player maybe at most so we needed someone to be that 20 30 goal a season striker. City have it with Erling Haaland plenty of other clubs in the Premier League do too and we needed someone to grab the goals. We looked at Ivan Tony from Brentford but we opted to go for the 25 year old Nigerian star 
Carman, Victor Oshiman from Napoli. He's cost us a big fee of 82 million, which actually, considering how good he is and his age and the fact that Napoli bought him for 62 million, isn't the craziest fee in the world. He's valued now at over 160 million, supposedly. Physically, absolutely dominant, quick, strong, and good in the air. A perfect modern day striker. The only problem was, a day or so after buying him, he's got a cruciate ligament injury and is out for nine months. So Jackson is going to have to step up for the course of this season and hopefully Ossiman is one for the future. So unlucky there, but he is out injured now. So that was £146 million spend, £124 million bought in with plenty of good young players going out on loan. I won't read them all out, but you can see it here. From Fafana to Slanina, plenty of great young talent being loaned out to get some development, either to sell them on in the future or become part of our first team. Financially, as those predictions shown, us not being in the Champions League has had a huge effect. The club's balance is in debt. We're going to have to sort that out, whether that's by selling these young players as they begin to develop or winning some trophies, winning the Champions League, winning the Premier League, but we seem to be a mile off of that considering we finished sixth last year. But our best 11 going into the second season is Costa in goal with Reese James, Wesley Fofana and Colville at the back alongside Chilwell, Fernandez, Caicedo, Sterling, Unkunku, Mudrik and Ossiman. Now we've got Unkunku fully fit, we'll be hoping to see some good performances from him to grab some goals for the team, but let's see how we can get on in season two. And it was a fifth place finish for our Chelsea team. I've had to actually show this in a different way because we've gone past what was considered season two. We're now in season three and that was because our team was in the Club World Cup and that was still going on. So we were still simulating games to see how that went. And that meant that we lost the usual screens that we used to see how we did last year. But I found it here. We finished in fifth place with 72 points, which is still 18 points away from the eventual winners, Manchester City. We were joint with Aston Villa on points and one point off third place Tottenham. It's meant that we finished fifth but we did get a Champions League spot. For those interested, the Club World Cup, we got all the way to the final and lost 4-1 against Real Madrid, which was quite a disappointing result. It would have been nice to have won that. We made it to the fifth round of the FA Cup where Arsenal defeated us in a penalty shootout after a 4-4 draw in what would have been an all-timer FA Cup classic almost. And in the Europa League, we had a great chance to win it with the semi-finalists being Leverkusen, Marseille, ourselves and Ludogorets. But unfortunately, we lost to Marseille in the semi-final. They then went on into the final to lose 4-0 against Leverkusen. That was a good chance for us to win a European trophy, but it didn't happen. Our standout performance from last year were Christopher Nkunku, who hit 18 goals and 10 assists in the league and might be exactly what we were looking for in that number 10 position. Once Ossiemen came back from injury, he chipped in with six goals in 10 starts, which isn't bad, but we'll be hoping he can kick on from there. And once again, it was Rhys James, Mr. Consistent at the back, who was one of our best performers across the course of the season. But now we've got some work to do. We've been given £75 million to to spend. We've got negative 200k in the wage budget. So to sort that out, we're going to have to move the transfers over. And all of a sudden, we've got way less money to spend in this window. Financially, we're still 50 million pounds in debt. So we need to do the right transfers this summer in terms of outgoings to make some money, but also incomings to keep elevating this team so we can actually win some competitions. Before we show the transfers for season three, don't forget if you are enjoying the video up to this point to smash the like button for me. I won't ask you again, but it really does help the videos and I'd be massively thankful to anyone who does that. But let's see who we sold and who we signed in our third year. Robert Sanchez was our number one in our first season, but after Diogo Costa arrived, he got less game time and decided he wanted to leave the club. So we let him do exactly that. He's gone to Fulham to be their goalkeeper for 13 million pounds. And it was a similar situation for Dorde Petrovic. He was our third choice last season. And for that reason, Reason. He got upset, wanted to leave, so he's gone to Hoffenheim for 5.75 million. Kendry Paez is a player that is joining Chelsea in real life at the age of 18, and it's happened here in the in game world. We didn't do anything, it was just already set to happen. One of the brightest young talents in world football has joined us for 17 million pounds. I offered him out for loan straight away. I was working on some other transfers, and it turned out because he was in the development center, the people in charge of the academy sorted out his loan for us, and he's actually gone to Arsenal for the season. So clearly, he's a good player if he can go to a team that's probably considered better than us right now and play for them. But we'll see if he actually gets any game time there. And then we've added some serious star power to our defense, bringing in 27-year-old Frenchman Theo Hernandez from AC Milan. He had a release clause fee of 57 million, which we activated after two great seasons out in Italy there since we've started this rebuild. A phenomenal talent and easily our best left back. Chilwell's there to compete, but we have loaned out a bunch of players this season to get some game time and hopefully sort out some kind of permanent deal for 
for them. Cucurella, Chukwameka, De Sassi, David Washington, Datro Fofana, Andre Santos, Armando Broya, all been loaned out to get some game time and maybe even secure a permanent transfer away for some of them. That might seem harsh like I'm selling a lot of good young talent, but there's so many good young players in this squad that we can't have all of them here and they're either going to stagnate and have their contracts run out or we make some money from them. So we need to make sure they're playing football. That way, if they prove themselves, they can come into the first team. And if not, we can make loads of cash from selling them. And our young side is starting to come together now with Diogo Costa in goal, a similar back line to who we saw before, but Theo Hernandez comes in as our left back. Mudrik is making his way into that starting lineup alongside Caicedo, Fernandez and Ossiman. So we've got a very good young squad. A lot of players that are going to continue to get better. So let's see how we can do in our third season at the club. And this is a hell of a lot more like it this year. Not only did we win a trophy, yes, it is the Carabao Cup, but we won something. Beating Man City in a penalty shootout after a 1-1 result. That means we've now won the FA Cup and the Carabao Cup in our three years here. So we're starting to pick up some silverware along the way. But the impressive part this season was the league, where we managed to close in on title winners Manchester United of all clubs by three points. Man City were one point above us and United three points above us. Liverpool only one behind. But we've clearly secured ourselves as one of the best four teams in the league this year and we look very good for it another win out there and we could have had that trophy with a greater goal difference than Manchester United so definitely a bit of progress for us and that is also shown in the Champions League where we got all the way to the semi-final only just to narrowly lose out to eventual champions Man City losing 3-2 on aggregate along the way though we knocked out Inter Milan as well as Real Madrid the kings of the Champions League so for me this has definitely been a successful season and that was the case for some of our players too the likes of Mikhailo Mudrik having his best year in a Chelsea shirt so far getting a 7.3 average match rating with 10 goals and 8 assists in only 28 appearances. We were looking for a 30 goal a season striker in Oshimen and he nearly gave it to us with 29 goals in all competitions. 20 of them being in the league which obviously was a huge increase in what we had before and that has been a big difference in carrying us up the table. Interestingly enough that trophy Fafana had a great year out on loan at Porto. I said these players were out there to impress or earn themselves a future move and he is going to do one of those two things. Either come in to our team next season or we'll reevaluate it and sell him on whilst his stock is high because he had a great year out in Portugal. Anunkunku has also been phenomenal scoring 21 goals in all competitions. Him behind Aussie men has been absolutely brilliant for us in the league and led to some fantastic results and hopefully we can kick on from there. But we've got a big issue because the bank balance has only got worse. Things are projected to get better as time goes on. We'll also get a lot of our money for being in the Premier League and whatnot in a few months or so. That will help negate quite a lot of that debt but it has meant we haven't got lots of money to spend. I say lots of money. It's still 50 million and 300 grand a wage budget, which is plenty for most clubs. But for the kind of players that would really improve our first team, I'm not sure that kind of cash is going to be enough. So we're going to have to move some players on to both help that bank balance, but also bring in some extra talent into this team. And we've got our first huge sale of this rebuild and kind of proof in the pudding of what Todd Bowley and co are trying to do at Chelsea with signing so many of these good young players. If they do come good, they can sell them on and make a hell of a lot of money or have them improve the first team. And it's happened with Fafana. We mentioned he did well out at Porto. He came back, had a £70 million bid from Real Madrid to be one of their starting strikers. Could go up to £75 million. As soon as he saw that, Fafana wanted to leave. And as good as he is, we're definitely going to take that money and run away with it. We could never have offered him the four £400,000 a week that they're giving him there over in Spain. And that allowed us to improve two key positions that I felt we needed to upgrade in in the squad. The first being centre-back where we've bought in Usmane Diamonde, a 22-year-old Ivorian who comes in from Sporting Club de Portugal and is one of the best centre-backs in the world and he's only 22 with so much room to get better yet. A brilliant ball player who's very strong physically as well as being quick and for £40 million or so his release clause, we have got a great deal there because he's valued at over £80 million pounds now and is going to slot straight in to that back line and we've added some extra midfield depth to some real quality again shopping in the Portuguese divisions bringing in João Neves a 21 year old Portuguese national who has been playing for Benfica and playing very well particularly last season which caught the eyes of our scouts if you don't know we only sign players in these rebuilds that our scouts recommend he can play forward as well as offering us something in the defense and he gives us some great balance in the team our midfield options now are Neves and Lavia Lavia has been developing very well in this rebuild alongside Caicedo and Enzo Fernandez. So some great options in the middle of the park. 
You can see there's a big list of players going yet again. Cucurella, Andre Santos, Broya, Gallagher, Madaweke, all going out there, trying to get some game time and secure themselves a permanent deal somewhere whilst we keep improving our core first 11. Some young players that go out on loan though do get a chance in the first team. I'm not just ignoring every player because Angelo came in from Strasbourg in his first season. Since then, he played 36 games for us in our second season. In season three, he racked up 25 league appearances. So he's getting plenty of game time. So if you're good enough and there's space in the team, you will get it because he ended up taking up Noni Madueke's minutes, which has led to him getting upset and wanting to leave the club. And now I think things are really going to kick on for us because our best 11 is looking absolutely stacked and our bench is full of great talent. All the way from Costa through to Ossiemen, we have world-class players in every position here, in my opinion, who all are of an age where they can get better. And then on the bench, you've got the likes of Badia Shield, Lavia, who, like I say, has been developing so well during the course of this rebuild. We've got Diamande, Chilwell, Nicholas Jackson, who has been a very good player for us despite not playing all that much when he does play he is very handy we've got Cole Palmer as well Malo Gusto Angelo Jean Neves we have got a great squad here ready to really attack the Premier League and the Champions League hopefully in season four so let's see what we can do with this pretty elite level side and this is more like it. We have delivered the Premier League to Chelsea Football Club. 82 points, one point more than our second closest competitors, Manchester City. Last year, we got 80 points. Clearly, our new signs were enough to take us up that little level to 82. With 61 goal difference, we're clearly playing some very attacking football. Over time, I have adjusted the tactic a little bit, only in terms of the roles that we're using. I haven't done any additional instructions, and that seems to have really benefited some of our players. The Carabao Cup, we got to the semi-final. The Champions League, we were knocked out in the quarterfinals by PSG by a pretty big margin actually losing 5-2 on aggregate which was quite disappointing but look the fact that we've won the Premier League we've got to be delighted with that because it's been so long since Chelsea have really considering the success that they used to have 2016 was their last title win under Antonio Conte so exactly 10 years on a decade later we have delivered another Premier League title and disrupted the Manchester dominance outside of that one win by Arsenal that the Premier League has had since Liverpool won it so now I think even with one year to go if this was how far the rebuild went and we won the Premier League, the FA Cup and the Carabao Cup, we could be content with that but I want to go one further in season five so we're going to have to make the right signings to take our team to another level however we have already got so many great players at the club so many players performing well Mudrik getting 22 goals and Kunku getting 20 Kendry Paez and Angelo also contributing to the team João Neves having a great first season Lavia with 15 goals as well goals all over the pitch but none more so than what Victor Osimhen delivered with 39 goals in all competitions the Nigerian is now 28 years old in the prime of his career scoring 20 25 goals in the league last season, making him one of the best goal scorers in the division and our team is just getting better. A lot of our best players are 26, 27, so still have some great years left at the very top and we'll be hoping to see that in our final season. There is some good news though. Financially, we're now back in the green, 27 million pounds in the bank balance. You can see the projection shows us getting better and better each year. Thankfully, now that we're in European competition and performing well in the Premier League, we've been able to get some money in and it's given us a big total of 77 million with 350,000 pounds in the wage budget to spend next year with plenty of players leaving including Malé Gusto who could be leaving as you can see here. There's a lot of work to be done in terms of incomings to make this team a Premier League challenger yet again. Okay, and our final transfer window is a huge one with over £250 million of sales and over £200 million spent. It has been a crazy window. And we actually had a couple of deals taken out of our hands. The first one was Theo Hernandez. Al Ali out in Saudi Arabia came in for £70 million, more money than what we originally paid for him. After two good years for us, not amazing, but good years at the club, they came in and he would be extremely unsettled if he wasn't allowed to go there. And how can you blame him when they're offering him £900,000 a week? He's 20 nine years of age now so I thought you know what let's let him move on and we'll try and reinvest that in the team there's no point keeping a player who's going to be upset and disrupt the dressing room and it was a similar case for Wesley Fofana said he'd be extremely unsettled if he couldn't move to PSG when they came in for him the 26 year old Frenchman has been really good for us over the last few years particularly last season and now he's left for 63 million pounds potentially rising to 70 which is pretty much the initial investment that Chelsea paid for him so he got five seasons or so out of the Frenchman and then sold him on for pretty 
pretty much the same money, which isn't terrible business. Now he's going to go on and be great for PSG, I'm sure. But obviously that gave us a hell of a lot of money to reinvest back into our team. But the sales didn't stop there. David Washington is another example, like that Trofafana, of those players that we've been loaning out to eventually sell when they come good. He's now 22 years of age, a Brazilian international striker with five goals. He had a good World Cup performance for Brazil about a year ago and has been on the radar of a lot of clubs. And it's led to him eventually leaving for Barcelona, who came in for 38 million, potentially rising to 42 and a half. Chelsea paid 30 million for him. So we've tripled our investment on the 22 year old. So it does show buying young and getting those transfers right can lead to very lucrative moves in the future. Conor Gallagher is left to rivals Arsenal for 20 million pounds. He was on loan there last year and they decided to make the move permanent. A 20 million pound fee is definitely not bad for a man whose game time was dwindling out as the years went on, particularly after Jao Neves came in. There really wasn't a place for Conor Gallagher in the team. So he's now left at the age of 27. We'll say goodbye to him, take the cash, thank him for his service and we'll reinvest that in our midfield. And now I'll speed through a few more sales because there was still a hell of a lot more. Mark Cucurella has gone to Aston Villa for 20 million after a loan out at Betis and Napoli that gave us 5 million in total. So we've made about 25 million pound back on the initial 60 million pound investment by Chelsea. Noni Madueke was very upset with the amount of game time he was getting. So we've allowed him to leave to go to Bournemouth where he was on loan last season for 13 and a half million. Axel de Sassi went on loan to Liverpool last year of all places and did enough to earn himself a 16 million pound move. With the sense backs we had at the club, there was not really much space for de Sassi anymore. So he moves on. And finally, Leslie Ugochukwu has left to join Nice. Never really worked out for him here. He went on loan a few times to the French divisions and performed well enough to earn himself an £8 million move away. I don't really think we're going to miss him. We started off by replacing Theo Hernandez at left back with Fabiano Parisi here, an Italian international who's coming in as kind of a deputy to Chilwell and he's a lot younger than Chilwell too, who's now in his 30s. So he can kind of start to change over the guard there as time goes on. He's been playing pretty well out in the Italian divisions for Fiorentina. Our scouts recommended him. He wasn't a crazy fee at 40 million. So we save about half the money that we made from selling Theo Hernandez. And it actually kind of balances the squad out a little bit better because Chua was getting upset with his game time whilst Hernandez was at the club. But now this should settle things down. Wesley Fafana has been replaced by Piero Hincarpe. 77 million pounds was his release clause fee, which we've paid after some great years out for them in the Bundesliga. Now he comes in straight up as the Wesley Fafana replacement. We made about 70 million from Fafana and spent just over 70 on Hincape. So it's not really a huge change. Hincape is a little bit younger. He's left footed and can play left back. So it gives us a little bit more depth. So it's not the worst transfer in the world, but this is going to go down as one of the best transfers because we have bought in, in our final season for our last incoming, Lamine Yamal from Barcelona. The man who is currently playing for their first team at the age of 15 is an absolute gem in football manager and has started playing for Barca in recent years. He had an 84 million pound release clause and I wanted to activate it before Barca Barca gave him a new deal. He's a great player with so much potential, already such a talent at the age of 20, internationally capped, and it says he's already one of world football's global superstars and he's only going to get better yet. So what a signing he is. Yes, he was a lot of money, but he comes in as one of our best players and he's going to go on to be one of the best in the world in no time. So we're delighted to have him. To finish off, I'd absolutely love it if we could win the Champions League. It's going to be hard to do, but I feel like we've definitely got the squad to at least challenge for it. Okay, so our fifth season is done and we didn't just win one trophy. We didn't win two. We didn't even win the treble. We've gone on to win the quadruple. Now, it's not necessarily the quadruple you might imagine. It does include a community shield and a Carabao Cup, but we have won the Premier League, the Champions League and the two previously mentioned trophies in what has been an unreal season. We got knocked out in the FA Cup by Everton in the third round, but we'll forget that happened. The Carabao Cup, we took on Sheffield United and won 4-1. The Premier League, we won by two points over Liverpool and we were way ahead of everybody else in our best season yet. An 87 points total is certainly a very good result and then the Champions League we beat PSG 3-1 in the final in a game that we'll watch in a second but what a season that's been. We have a few specific players to thank for it and Kunku doing great but Mudrik has continued to get better and better throughout this rebuild into one of the best players in the world in his position. Aussie men scored 33. We had a youngster from the academy get 10 who looks like he's going to be an unreal talent already playing 
playing for England. If you do go onto my Patreon and decide to continue this rebuild, you are going to have an absolutely stacked squad because Laminia Mal is continuing to be an absolute unreal talent with 12 assists in the Prem and seven goals at only the age of 20, getting international appearances still. And it was him who opened the scoring in the Champions League final where Nkunku and Sterling allowed us to get a 3-1 result. So let's see this match. Caicedo plays the ball in and Yamal scores a header of all things into the back of the net. That opened the game up to be 1-0 in the 30th minute and then in the 50th minute we had our second with Mudrik showing great pace to get past the PSG defence. He cuts into the middle where Nkunku finishes brilliantly past Donnarumma. Wesley Fofana in the heart of the defence for PSG losing out there. So you know you know, that's what you get for joining PSG, Wesley. Here goes Mudrik down the left-hand side again, doing very well. Plays a ball in and it falls to Sterling, who once again scores a header. That's two headers in the game from players that you would never expect to score a header. And then we conceded at the end with Kolo Mouane going one-on-one -on -one with Diamande, passing it to Vitinha, back to Kolo Mouane, who showed great pace and then tucked it past Dowson in goal. I have no idea who that was. Diogo Costa must have been injured on the day. And this man, Shannon Dowson, played a 19-year-old Englishman. What a day that would have been for him. But there you go. That is the reason rebuild over so don't forget to subscribe to the channel so you don't miss our next rebuild and let me know who you want to see rebuilt next down below i'll see you next time guys goodbye